Scientists around the world are reeling in shock as a mysterious and terrifying event has unfolded in the Jordan River. Something inexplicable has happened that has left experts scratching their heads, struggling to understand what has occurred. Join us as we delve into the heart of this unnerving mystery and explore the implications of this strange and alarming occurrence. Are you ready to uncover the chilling truth behind what just happened with the Jordan River? Let's start talking! The Jordan River travels through the country and history of the Bible, giving its waters a spiritual meaning that distinguishes it from other rivers. The Jewish people have a special connection to the Jordan River because, under Joshua's leadership, the Israelite tribes were able to ford the river on dry land and enter the Promised Land after spending years wandering in the wilderness. The prophets Elijah and Elisha were also able to walk over the river without getting wet, and Elisha was able to cure leprosy that was afflicting the Syrian general Naaman by having him wash in the Jordan River. The Jordan River begins its journey in the hilly region where Israel, Syria, and Lebanon share a border. As it makes its way southward, it flows through the Sea of Galilee on its way to its ultimate destination, the Dead Sea. It defines the border between Israel and Jordan in the north and the West Bank and Jordan in the south along a significant portion of its whole length of 320 kilometers. The length of the river's descent from its source to the Dead Sea is 950 meters. It flows at a level that is significantly lower than that of the surrounding sea for the majority of its journey down the Jordan Rift Valley. Its name means Dan Flows Down, which refers to one of its tributaries. Although there is a song from the past that claims the Jordan River is deep and wide, the river as it exists today is neither deep nor wide. There are stretches when it looks more like a brook than a river. The width is less than 10 meters and the depth is less than 2 meters. Seasonal floods in the winter and spring increase their width to 1.5 kilometers from the time of Jesus until the middle of the 20th century. Dams have been built in Syria, Jordan, Lebanon, and Israel, which have eliminated the risk of floods. It is generally agreed that John the Baptist baptized Jesus in Jordan, on the east bank of a big loop in the river directly across from Jericho. This location is thought to be in Jordan. It has been determined that Bethany beyond the Jordan was located in Wadi al-Karar, which is located less than two kilometers east of the river's current path. After being threatened with death by stoning in Jerusalem, Jesus escaped to this location for his protection. This is where John lived and performed baptisms. Before the signing of the peace accord between Jordan and Israel in 1994, this region was a military zone controlled by Jordan. The Jordanian government has made the area open to archaeologists, pilgrims, and visitors following the removal of neighboring minefields. The remains of a Byzantine-era monastery can be seen within Jordan's newly established Baptism Archaeological Park. The monastery featured at least four churches, one of which was constructed around a cave that is thought to be the cave that ancient pilgrims refer to as the Cave of John the Baptist. A modern site honoring Christ's baptism was created in Yardinit in Israel, which is located at the southernmost tip of the Sea of Galilee. This was done because the place in Jordan was unreachable. It is a popular destination for Christian travelers to reaffirm their baptismal commitments or for new Christians to be baptized, often in white robes and undergoing total immersion in the moderate waters of the Jordan River. The site is maintained by a kibbutz, and the kibbutz is responsible for its upkeep. The waters of Jordan have been diverted and polluted. The Jordan River has been a source of controversy between Israel, Jordan, Syria, Lebanon, and the Palestinians because its waters are an essential resource for the arid lands that are located in the vicinity. More than 90% of the natural flow of the river has been redirected in recent times for use in residential and agricultural pursuits. The lower Jordan is severely contaminated due to the discharge of sewage and the runoff from many industries. The Lower Jordan was one of the top 100 most endangered cultural heritage sites on the World Monument Fund's list, which was published in 2007. In support of the motion, a regional environmental organization called Friends of the Earth Middle East stated, the region's current policies treat the river as if it were a backyard dumping ground. A roughly seven-mile length of the Jordan River is being cleaned up and made swimmable again, and it's all happening slowly, steadily, and mostly under the radar. It will take another three years or so for the pollution to be eliminated. A pedestrian and bicycle trail now runs along much of the western side, from the Rob Roy canoeing attraction southwest of the Sea of Galilee 
to the settlement of Menahemia. The banks are also being spruced up, manicured, and reconstructed in portions. There are little bridges that connect the islands, and a steep embankment has been flattened to make bays and gently sloping terrain near the water's edge. To begin providing shade, salt-tolerant trees are being planted and boulders have been placed in the stream to generate ripples and alter the velocity of the flow, creating unique microhabitats for riparian animals and birds. Seating and picnic tables are in the works. Although the public is welcome to visit, on the weekday this reporter went there, he saw only one fisherman and two campers. The enormous Syrian-African Rift Valley, of which the Jordan Valley is a part, served as a major thoroughfare for the movement of early humans between Africa, Europe, and Asia, and continues to serve as an important corridor for the movement of wildlife, especially birds. Many stories and traditions that are central to Judaism, Christianity, and Islam take place along the river and its banks. However, Israel, Syria, and Jordan have diverted nearly all of the river's water for human use south of the Sea of Galilee, where it travels for about 80 miles before emptying into the Dead Sea. A clean zone extends for about 1.2 miles between the Degania Dam at the southern end of the Sea of Galilee and the Alumat Dam further downstream. Currently, this area is being developed into the Yardinet baptizing site. But to the south of the Alumat Dam, a massive earthen dam lies a different narrative. Near Naharayim, southeast of Menahemia, the waters between this dam and the confluence of the Jordan and Yarmouk rivers were inaccessible, stench-filled and polluted for years. From the Degania Dam to Naharayim, the river was channeled into a canal-like structure at the turn of the previous century. The goal was to increase water flow for Pinchas Rutenberg's Naharayim hydroelectric power project. The Water Authority reports that after peaking at 1.2 billion cubic meters per year before Israel dammed the river in the 1960s, the amount of water flowing out of the Sea of Galilee has decreased to just 10 to 20 MCM each year. Waste, sewage, and brackish water have been dumped into the river for a long time south of the Alumat Dam, and the situation has only become worse with the addition of runoff from agricultural pesticides and fish farms. Israel constructed the so-called Salty Carrier in the 1960s to keep salt water out of the freshwater Sea of Galilee, which serves as the country's emergency drinking storage. Just to the west of the Sea of Galilee and the Jordan River was a 13.7-mile-long deep channel flanked by high earthen embankment walls. The open-air carrier was converted to a pipe around 13 years ago, but salty water continues to enter the river below the Alumont Dam at a rate of 25 million cubic meters per year. Raw sewage from Tiberias, Safed, and other Galilee settlements was also dumped into the salty carrier, further clouding the waters. In 2015, with the construction of a sewage treatment plant across from the Alumont Dam, the latter ceased. Last year, it was upgraded to offer cutting-edge care. The Water Authority estimates that about 4 million cubic meters of clean sewage still enter the river each year. In around three years, between the confluence of the Jordan River and the Yavneil Stream, opposite Kibbutz Degania Bet, a desalination plant will be constructed and put into operation to treat the salt water. About 10 million cubic meters of desalinated water per year will be piped to a location south of Menahemia for use in commercial fish ponds in the Emek Hamayanot area. Meanwhile, all of the purified water will be piped to farmers for use in crop irrigation. Once these contaminants are removed, the amount of clean water from the Sea of Galilee that flows into the river each year will increase by at least 50 MCM. Implementation of a government project to enlarge the river in places and restore the area's natural beauty has been the focus of the Kinneret Drainage and Streams Authority for the past 12 years. The goal is to get a lot of people to come and help revive ecosystems that have been suffering for decades. Thousands of tons of accumulated silt from salt and sewage have been removed, and the eastern embankment of the Salty Carrier has been leveled to provide a place for tiny bays and lawn areas. Authority engineer Oshri Iluz estimates that so far, the redevelopment and landscaping have cost upwards of $11 million, with the majority of it coming from the Israel Lands Authorities Fund for the protection of open spaces. Until the INPA finishes the paperwork required to declare the area between the two dams a national park and turn the remaining section down to Menahemia into a nature reserve, the authority is in the process of establishing a partnership with the Jordan Valley Regional Council to share the burden of maintenance. 
A representative from INPA stated that while the agency had no say in the matter, the aim was that the park and reserve would be declared this year. There would be no plans to charge admission for either, she said. Looking at the waste left on a rock by the river, Elu stated that the drainage authority lacked the necessary resources to collect the trash and that the arrival of the INPA would provide the area with a mother and father to look after it properly. Tel Obeda, an unremarkable-looking mound in Kibbutz Beit Zera, is one of the archaeological sites along the river that will be developed into a tourist attraction. Archaeologists have unearthed evidence of one of the earliest departures of Homo erectus from Africa by sifting through 60 layers of soil, the oldest of which dates back 1.5 million years. The rehabilitated section of the river stops before the Adama Dam, where cement walls dramatically divert the river's flow eastward toward the Rutenberg Hydroelectric Dam. The otter's small passage along the massive cement embankment was constructed by the Drainage Authority. The Kinneret Drainage and Streams Authority is in charge of coordinating and implementing the projects with the blessing of the Tourism and Environmental Protection Ministries, the Israel Lands Authority, the Israel Nature and Parks Authority, the KKL JNF Jewish National Fund, and the municipal governments. Both banks of this section of the river are in Israel, however, the rehabilitation and extra clean water allocation only apply to this section. The waterway defines the border between Jordan and Israel, with each country holding one bank south of where the Jordan and Yarmouk rivers meet. Before the river flows into the area of the West Bank, partially controlled by the Palestinian Authority on its way to the Dead Sea, Israel and Jordan signed a declaration of intent in November to work together to restore and develop the area. The date of the execution of such an agreement is difficult to predict because of the unpredictable nature of international politics. Even though groups like EcoPeace and the Arava Institute for Environmental Studies are working to bring Jordanians, Palestinians and Israelis together, nothing official has taken place as of yet. Israeli head of EcoPeace, Gidon Bromberg, called the river a story of demise for the legitimate reasons that we're in the desert, water is scarce and people need it. Water is always the source of contention, he continued. As the saying goes, when the river is the border, then allowing fresh water to flow means you are empowering the enemy. But he went on to say, it wouldn't do much good for Israel to rehabilitate the river's western bank as it flows through Jordan and the West Bank if the water continued to receive the effluent from cesspits on the other side, serving some 700,000 Jordanians and 52,000 Palestinians who don't have access to a sewage network. Bromberg argues that in the face of growing water shortages caused by rapidly growing populations and amplified by climate change, regional resilience can be strengthened by directing additional water to the river, encouraging regional cooperation to clean it up and managing it through a trilateral river commission of the sort that exists elsewhere in the world. One of the difficulties he cited that precipitated the civil war in Syria was a severe water shortage. He went on to say, the border issue should not prevent us from reallocating water after explaining that India and Pakistan cooperatively administered a portion of the Indus River despite antagonistic relations. There is no need to define borders to reach an agreement on water sharing. Jordan already receives water from the Sea of Galilee. That's all for the video today. We will be right back with more such videos. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel.